Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 28. I am Michael Mac Gaines. And I am Casey. I can legitimately say I am Casey Mac Coglin because Mac is actually my maiden name. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say Casey Cube Coglin. Oh, sorry. So it would be all like a, a little ration, alliteration. I, I can't even say the uh, word alliteration. No. Oh, you I, were not meant to say that word. No, I'm not. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the Info Loop Show, episode twenty-eight. This is the show, the show, the one show about what? About Max? About Apple? Oh yeah, it's the only one about the o- Max. <laughs> the only one. There's it's only the- one, and it's us. It's the How best one. Damn it! For you that you would be here watching. <laughs> Oh my goodness! All right, let's start with the news. You you can talk about the big announcement this week while I close my door, which I forgot to do. Go ahead. All right, so the announcement of the announcement has arrived, people. It's all but confirmed. Um, All the big major news uh, sources have been reporting and confirming this. We just need Apple's seal of approval. (laughs) But September 15th, it looks like, will be the date of the Apple event announcing Mm -hmm. the iPhone 5 and an iPad mini to possibly go on sale just a mere nine days later. Can you handle it? Is I it... can't. I'm losing my shit. This is awesome. <laughs> is it nine days or six days? I thought it was the 21st. The event. Six weeks away now. Uh, nine days the... from the event. They're supposed to go on okay. sale. Um, I... According to sources. According to sources. <laughs> The uh, the iPhone five. I was Casey and I were talking about this yesterday. Is that what I'm really really hoping for this time around? Is that I don't have to sit online like an idiot like I did the last time. Um, the reason why the lines are so long, if you yeah. remember this, is that they had to activate the phones in the store. And I'm online talking to an Apple dude. I'm like, we can do this at home. Why are you holding up this long line for hours and hours when we can just take the phones and go home? And so. I think uh, hopefully that's what they'll do this time. Uh, the last time they just had to. They, they had some sort of rule where they like, well, well sir, think, we have to activate them in the stores. I, uh, I don't know because I think they're still going to have to activate them in the stores. And, well, I mean, really it could go either way. It's about 50-50. It could go either way, I think. I mean, there's arguments for both, but... Um, Regardless, I'm probably not going to be standing in line because I will pre-order it from work and then it will just arrive <laughs> magically. I uh, I like my four. I'm going to get a five. I'm, I'm hoping this time around that they allow us to pre-order them and then they'll be delivered to the house. Mm-hmm. If not, I don't know. I, I can't. I, I Look, I'll, I'll wait online for stuff, but that <laughs> line for the four was ridiculous. And mm. I'm not doing that again. I, I, I can't. Well, then don't. No, I won't. Uh, maybe I'll go to an AT and T store it's or something that, like that. Yeah, I hear the lines are um, far less at the uh, AT and T stores, and I think it's probably going to be lessened this time. This is the first launch where the iPhone is going to not only be at all three major carriers, mm-hmm. but also at a lot more retail outlets. Yeah. Oh, Best um, Buy. That's true. Yeah, Best Buy will probably have it on launch. Um, I mean, there's a lot more stores carrying it now. Fry's has it now, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. Um, They might not all have it on launch day, though. I don't mind not getting it on launch day. I mean, I would like to. But but I'm just saying, if I have to wait like a day or two, I'll be fine with that. But I think maybe that's what I'll do. I remember when the 4 came out. You can pre-order it at Best Buy and then pick them up there. So maybe that's what I'll do this time yeah. around is I'll pre-order it. I'll just roll out of bed and then get online. And then when the store opens at 10, I'll get it. And then I don't have to wait online for six hours. or whatever. You know what it was? I waited online so long. I got there at like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. And um, my oldest was graduating. And I left the line. I had to leave the line, come uh, back, and the people, the people that were there where I was standing still uh-huh. did not get their phones after I went to graduation and came back. That's how slow that that line was. So, not doing it. Not worth it. Okay, but then. Don't. I Nobody am. I am. You do. <laughs> 
I'm stoked for the iPhone 5. Uh, if anything, yeah, I know. My phone's almost a year old. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, I'm... I need a new phone right now. I want to see what Apple does with NFC. I've wanted NFC in, in an iPhone since the 4. I really hoped that it was going to be in the 4, and it wasn't. Um, yeah. And we... I mean, there's a good chance it's going to be in this one, but we still don't really know for sure if it is or not. Mm -hmm. You know, they there's been times where stuff has been so heavily rumored, like the iPhone 4S was going to be LTE. It came close, mm -hmm. but it wasn't... LTE wasn't, you know, put in until the, uh, the new iPad. Yeah. So... You know, that could still be left off the table. I don't know. That's one of those things that I think could be left off. Yeah. I mean, the new, you know, the bigger screen, the the new dock connector, those are pretty solid. But mm -hmm. some of the other stuff is um, kind of iffy still. Oh, do you care about the iPad mini? Not particular. I mean, I'm glad that it's that, you know, they would make that option. Like, I'm glad the 11 inch Air exists. You know, but um, and I and I see a market for it, um, but I don't think I would get it. I just got the new iPad, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to be getting the mini. Me neither. I have no interest in it at all. So, yeah. Right. Apple. Uh, well, it was announced today that Apple leads global PC shipments, but there's you a caveat to this whole thing. iPads as PCs. Yeah, I I'm not exactly thrilled about this. I mean, look, it's nice to to hear that Apple is is on top with something, but realistically, if you if you factor in iPads, um, Apple is shipping 21 million, they ship 21 million units PCs, quote unquote, last quarter whereas HP was just behind them with 13.5 million. So, there's a difference of um, 7.5 million, and I didn't look up how many iPad shipped last quarter, but I don't know. Do you think this is a fair assessment of last quarter shipments? Um, they actually do this. I mean, I've heard these numbers almost every quarter for like a year now mm -hmm. where uh, there's, you know, a set of numbers, and then uh, one or two analysts uh revise those numbers counting iPads as PCs. And so then, yeah, at first you see these numbers and you're like, oh, right on, finally. And then you notice that they're counting iPads as PCs and you're like, uh, I don't know if that is accurate. I mean, if we're counting iPads, then, well, I, I'd say, like, why aren't we counting, you know, other tablets like the Galaxy Next, or not, well, the Nexus 7 now, but the Galaxy Tab, but Android, you know, where would that, where would that fall in? I guess it would fall in under Samsung's, you know, allotment, but and if Sam you're going by manufacturer. Yeah, Samsung's not even on this list. It's Apple, HP, then Lenovo. I, I'm a little surprised yeah. at that because nobody I know owns a Lenovo. Acer... Yeah, they're kind of getting up there. Are they? Okay. Then Acer and then Dell and then others. So I really expected Samsung to be on that, that top five list. But, you know, if you think about it, Samsung's really, really new. They're probably the newest uh, to the PC market out of all of those. Mm -hmm. They only started making PCs about two years ago. And I think they only sell laptops. I haven't seen a desktop from Samsung. Mm -hmm. so, you know, they're, um, I mean, they only make a few models. And I, like I said, they've only been in the market for a couple of years. So, of course, they're not going to be beating out, you know, Acer or anybody else. Yeah. Um, this article that we have on 9to5Mac says uh, Samsung led as the Android pad vendor in quarter two. So, but I guess they just didn't sell enough to get on the top five list. So, okay. Yeah. I'm still surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Android, uh, what's going on with this Nexus Q? Oh, big surprise. Spoilers in case anybody was <laughs> on the edge of their seat waiting for a Nexus Q. Um, they stopped selling them because it was such a big hit. They were like, no, no, we can't keep taking orders, guys. We need to stop. We we literally cannot keep up with the demand. Um, 
we all saw this coming. I mean, you know, yeah. when it was first, it was first announced, you know, and they were announcing it at at Google I/O. It was like, okay, great. I mean, what what does it do? Like, it's it's a another set top box streaming thing. You yeah. already have one. It's called Google TV. Why are you competing with yourself? And why is it? 300 bucks that was the biggest problem with it is that you can get an apple TV even if you own a windows machine you can get an apple tv for 99 dollars be an it's apple real- hater as much as you want but 99 dollars how can you beat that yeah the the q i'm sorry is not better than three apple tvs no if i did not. between you know the little ball of androidness and <laughs> three apple tvs well i mean i'm a little biased but it's not even a bias thing. I, look, if they if somebody put out a Linux based device that was good, and it was seventy five bucks, let's say, would you buy it? Maybe. It depends on what you can do with it. But an Apple TV is ninety nine dollars, and yeah, we're doing a Mac show and everything like that. But I mean, come on, I mean, it's it's like a no brainer. And people say, well, it's expensive because it's made in the USA and go US and the US economy and everything. It's like, look. There's a balance that has to be met between the amount of money that people can spend on something like this and the fact that an Apple TV is $99 and, and does the exact same job. But anyway, they're, they're stopping uh, the, uh, the sale of the Nexus, 7, uh, the Nexus Q rather, simply because they found so many problems with it. And then other people, there are, there are a couple articles I read that said that the price was turning people off. Well, and, uh, I see my previous argument. I yeah. mean, it's it's four hundred dollars. No, three hundred dollars. Wait, is it three? No, it's three hundred dollars, and then four hundred what for the speakers? Oh no, it's like fifty bucks for a cable, or yeah. I don't know. There's some accessories that were crazy. Like on top of that initial crazy amount, then there were more crazy amounts. I don't know if they're trying to take a page out of Apple's book and say like, oh, people love paying 30, 50 bucks for cables, so we'll <laughs> do that. Um, or, you know, whatever. But uh, regardless, it didn't work. And um, maybe we'll see the Nexus Q later revamped and revised. <laughs> the but Death Star. <laughs> I won't, yeah, I won't be holding my breath. No, I won't either. Uh, what I will be holding my breath for is... Uh, iTunes integrating Twitter. Now, there have been rumors over the last week that uh, Apple was going to invest like $100 million into Twitter. And then those those rumors were debunked completely. Mm-hmm. But now there's another rumor going around saying that, um, and, and this goes back to what Tim Cook had said uh, at the D10 conference saying that they're, they're looking at ping and they don't know what they're going to do with it. And now yeah, it looks yeah. like what they might do, what Apple might do is integrate Twitter directly into iTunes. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Because then all you do is just tweet out the fact, like, I bought this, I bought this. Well, it kind of already is. I mean, when, whether, like, right before you're about to buy something or uh, download something, that link um, by the uh, the price or the download button, you can copy link, uh, share on Facebook, and share on Twitter. You've been able to do that for a while now. Sure. So, I mean, besides that, I guess maybe it would automatically tweet after you buy or download something. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. I, I don't know. It's, it's all rumor and speculation right now, but it makes sense. The ping thing was a good idea. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I, mean, I In fact, I keep I it open. Ping was, ping was like an afterthought. I think this is probably what they wanted to do initially, mm-hmm. what they what probably steve jobs wanted to integrate you know wanted to get facebook well i mean we knew he wanted to get facebook integration um and probably wanted to get twitter integration too but you know when their terms weren't agreeable or they couldn't come to a meeting of the minds then they just decided to whip up their own competitor ping and it um and it took off you know, it, it <laughs> took the country by storm, and everyone loved it, and it was a great success. It was cool and for it, about a week. It was and cool for like an hour. An hour. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it for about a week, and then it got a little boring. I, I still keep the window open. It's nice to see what people are buying. Uh, I have, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 people that I follow. And I look at the list, and I go, oh, that's actually kind of a neat idea. And then I'll... 
I'll look into an album once in a while. I'll buy something, but not very often. So I don't know, uh, but we'll we'll see what goes on with that. But I'm really looking forward to Twitter integration. The only problem that I have is that when I buy albums for my kids, mm-hmm. then it's going to show up in my Twitter stream. Like yeah, I just bought the new Katy Perry the- album. When no 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 when you those <laughs> Wiggles albums that you've been buying no. you know yeah that's all gonna show up. Star Mike <laughs> loves the Wiggles. <laughs> no, I hope that there's an option to turn the tweet on or off when I'm buying something because sure my kids, even though they probably should have their own account at this point, and I can like buy them the gift cards. Yeah, that's cool. why don't they uh, do have their because they really don't use their like they have their own computer but they don't use it very often so it's just easier to sync everything through one family account than it is to separate it at this point but that's a whole other issue my kid's gonna have his own itunes account the day after he's born (laughs) is he gonna have his own website and a twitter account too yeah i'll buy his domain name you know he'll have a, a ipad and a uh a little MacBook Air set aside for him. He's going to be like that little kid in the E Trade commercials. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I know. Like my kids are going to just—they're going to have like every Apple product from day one. Uh huh. All right. They're, you know, it's just—I I know that's going to happen. <laughs> well, what we know did happen are these crazy iPhone and iPad uh, prototypes. Tell us about this. I, I love these. Aren't these I cool? Can't get enough of that i mean they're all like half of them are just stupid and crazy and i'm glad they never came out but all this came out uh because of the apple samsung patent uh war currently uh, just started actually what monday or tuesday of this week Mm -hmm. um they're you know finally getting underway in the court system but um in their evidence that they had to um each company had to um, produce, I guess, their um, past CAD drawings and prototypes and illustrations of, you know, previous works and, and uh, what they were researching and whatnot. And Apple, you know, had to submit a bunch, and so this all came out, a bunch of iPhone and iPad uh, CAD drawings and prototypes and, and physical, like, prototypes that mm-hmm. they actually went so far as to build to see um what was what and some of them like there's a couple of ipads with kickstands on them yeah ipads that look like a a lunch tray that like curve underneath and iphones that look like a battlestar galactica i was just gonna mention that i was gonna say so tweet we all yeah totally (laughs) um apple even went so far as to create a prototype sony phone to kind of investigate, you know, well, if Sony made a phone, what would it look like? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got a big old volume wheel on the side. But um, some of the iPhone prototypes, like early, early on, some of the first ones that they were messing around with, look a lot like the iPhone 4. Yeah. There's one thing of- that, that came out of this, and, and the kickstand is actually a good point, is... Um, there are times when, uh, and, and this happens a lot with the whole Android Apple argument that goes on in the internet, is that people will sit around and they'll say, well, this came out on Android first, therefore Apple is stealing. Yeah. When you see prototypes of things that, that were developed years ago with mm-hmm. a kickstand. Now, the, what was it? The droid that had the kickstand, right? What, which one had the kickstand? The Motorola droid had a kickstand. And if Apple had come out with that, let's say a year later, for whatever reason, people yeah. would start screaming that they ripped off Motorola when, in fact, we see that these things were developed years before that. And so yeah. um, I think, if anything, this should be a lesson to a lot of people that are arguing about when software comes out. Just because it came out earlier than something, or I should say, if it, just because it came out later than something, doesn't mean it wasn't developed earlier than that. And Right, yeah. And it, it, I think things like this may uh, shut some people up. <laughs> I, I there's would think even so. one that looks a little bit like the um, the new Nokia Lumia 900, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny because I mean, 
A, these are all prototypes. So they're all things Apple thought about doing and then discarded because they weren't good enough. Right. And then you see these designs for whatever reason, you know, I'm sure Nokia isn't copying Apple or saw these designs. They probably came to the same conclusion on their own. But, you know, something like the Nokia, the uh, the Lumia that's actually regarded today as a really nice progressive design, like a lot of people really like that hardware regardless of the OS on it, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, Apple could have made that. And they chose not to because it wasn't good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just kind of funny to think about that thought process in yeah. a way. Yeah. Apple thinks that it's not good enough, but Motorola, I mean, rather Microsoft does. Yeah. It, it's like the best design Nokia's ever had, <laughs> which is actually Apple's trash, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the reason why the, the Lumia isn't selling well. I think, well, I think the reason it's not selling well is because the OS is loaded on it and, you know, it's not really getting marketed the way it should. I mean, I've used it. It's re it's, it's a nice phone. The hardware is really nice. Um, what, what makes it so good? Um, I do like the shape and the feel of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. The screen is, um, is I'm not sure if it's a... OLEDs or uh, AMOLED screen um, probably is because it's really vibrant um, and clear. And then the camera, you know, is is pretty nice. Um, and it's, I guess it's it's maybe I like it more because it's a little bit more, I guess iPhone like compared mm -hmm. to Androids. You know, it's it's thin, but it's not crazy thin like the Galaxy S3 mm -hmm. and the HTC One are just crazy thin and plastic mm -hmm. um where i think the nokia might be metal and glass so it, it it's heavier and it and it feels good you know and um i'm gonna stop right there before i get into um some sexual <laughs> window <laughs> all right well let's move on to rapid fire while we're here <laughs> it'd be a good place to stop that hulu plus <laughs> is now on apple t what nothing okay Apple Plus is now on Apple TV. You can get it free for a week, and then it's eight dollars a month. And people are ecstatic about this. What do you think? You have an Apple TV. I do. And while I could give two craps for Hulu Plus, I'm glad that Apple TV is still getting new content. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see new stuff, you know, coming to the Apple home, the Apple TV home screen. Yeah. Um, it sucks that you know you got to pay for it, but it's interesting that you pay for this eight bucks subscription subscription through iTunes. Mm -hmm. So it really syncs up with your iTunes account, and it goes through that. And so Hulu gets their money after I'm sure Apple takes its cut. Yeah, it's thirty percent, or we guess it's thirty percent because everything else is thirty percent. Everybody's guessing it is, but yeah. But um, just to go off on a little bit of a tangent, the Olympics are showing just how important um, cable TV still is to some people because you can't watch right. the Olympics on Hulu or Netflix or anything like that. Yeah. You would be able to watch it live on BBC. Um, uh, it's bbc.co.uk, I believe. Um, yeah. But the problem is that if you try to watch it outside it, the region that you're allowed to, it says, you know, on... on um, you can't watch it in your region, meaning the United States or somewhere else. So people have been getting yeah. proxies in order to get through yeah, to the BBC. Yeah, I heard there were some workarounds for that to get uh, the BBC Live Player yeah. uh, streaming. Because they're streaming every... They're doing a fabulous job of coverage, mm -hmm. and they're showing everything. Um, whereas our own domestic coverage isn't. And, it, I mean, NBC is just getting hit up, you know, every which way for doing a horrible job uh, covering it. But Yeah, that's a but, whole different issue. That's a different show. That's yeah. the Nexicon, which we record on Tuesdays. <laughs> See how this all sort of integrates? Uh, sorry about the little tangent. Um, Mountain Lion downloaded 3 million times in four days. This is huge. Yes, um, currently to date their biggest OS release today 
And I said that twice. <laughs> Their redundant statement is redundant. Um, <laughs> no, I think that Mountain Lion was very popular because some people were having some problems with Lion. And Mountain Lion has some features that are really cool, like iMessage and the notification area and, and a whole bunch of, of other things that we talked about on last week's show. But um, I like it. I like it a lot. I still haven't had, I still don't have a main machine to use it with, but if I did, I would. Um, I was I was sending some tweets back and forth between myself, Scott Johnson, and, and Patrick, not Patrick, at not Patrick on Twitter. Oh, yeah. uh, the problem with Mountain Lion for podcasts is that some of the sub, the um, audio subsystem is not in Mountain Lion, and so we're having some problems with that. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I think I've said this before on the show. Scott and I yeah. and a lot of other podcasters are still stuck in, stuck in Snow Leopard. Yeah, yeah, not even Lion. Like, Lion wasn't even... Fit. Oh, but though, I did hear, um, what, a couple of days ago, they released an update to Lion. There's, like, 10.7.5 yeah. or something that just came out, like, a day or two after Mountain Lion. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting, that they're still updating Lion concurrently with Mountain Lion. Hmm... I wonder why. <laughs> what does it mean? Yes. Double rainbow. What does it mean? <laughs> um, anyways. But, um, yeah. So, hey. Um, in case you'd been living in a cave for the last couple months. Um, let me bring you up to date. Uh, we've got the Olympics going on. So that's the thing. <laughs> Mountain Lion came out, and Mobile Me is no longer with us. It's it gone. Died. Adios. Um, Did you back up your stuff? Uh, I pulled all that stuff off there a long time ago, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, they shut it down, and um, they said that iWork is out of beta now because <laughs> nobody's using it, I suppose. Yeah. Do you use it? Uh, the iWork.com. Um, I used it for like one thing to share with somebody and then I think I started using Dropbox or something else right after. So I really never used it for much. Yeah, I didn't use it much either. Um, good idea, but there, I never well, used it. It was like, I think I also had mobile me too. And you can share stuff off your iDisc too. So it was, it was really weird and redundant. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up doing that a lot more. Um, for like resumes or weird stuff, you know, I'd have it on my iDisc and I would just send somebody the link and share it for like 24 hours or something. And you mm-hmm. could do that from your iDisc, but it's like, why would I use iWork.com? I mm-hmm. don't know. I don't know. Uh, for me, I guess it's just because I don't share a lot of documents. And if I did, I just wound up using Google Docs anyway. The yeah. only thing I really share are show notes with the co-hosts that I work with. That's really it. And I have one, no, two documents for work, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So, not a big deal. Uh, what's going on with the daily? Um, it's dying. But really, I mean, it hasn't. It it's. I has it ever really been alive? Well, they wanted you to believe that it was. <laughs> Like from day one, it's never yeah. really come on. It's never really been that much of a hit. Um, and today they laid off a third of its staff. Mm-hmm. And they're going to shut down after the elections. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, it was a good effort, I guess. Sort of. Well, they they weren't doing things the right way. There were there was a lot yeah. of criticism about how they're presenting their. Their data and um, and what can you get now for free on the web using an iPad? Yeah, they're making a a daily and yeah. everything, but I this mean, was supposed wanted to be to pay for that. like this is supposed to be a demo in what you what print should like digital print should be mm-hmm. on tap and what you can produce and what you know this is the future and it just ended up doing the same old thing that a lot of people were doing with websites and. And magazine, digital magazines, up until that point, like it really wasn't any kind of groundbreaking thing. Flipboard is a groundbreaking. Thing. Sure, absolutely. Like, that does a way better job than the Daily did. And who cares about you know their, uh, you know, original reporting or what have you? Mm-hmm. 
So it's it's I feel bad. It's sad that um, a third of the staff got laid off. It's a tough time for everybody out there, but uh, hopefully their skills will get them jobs somewhere else because there are iOS jobs out there everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. I don't think they'll be hurting too much. <laughs> All right, moving on to stuff I got. This is your stuff. You got stuff this week. What's the stuff? Show us the stuff. This week, I got the Jot Pro um, iPad stylus. So this is the one, I don't know if you can see it, that yeah. has like a ballpoint with a little plastic disc on the end. Mm-hmm. So um, instead of kind of like those little poof balls or rubber balls that a lot of the styluses have, I find that they usually, they're squishy, but then, you know, they get stuck a lot on the surface of the iPad, mm-hmm. um, whereas this one is supposed to imitate a, um, just a regular ballpoint pen, and it's, it's weighted, you know, it feels good and everything um, like that, like a real pen, and I've been using it with uh, my iPad for drawing and written notes. Um, it's definitely way better than like I said, any other stylus that I've used, which are usually the squishy rubber ball styluses. Mm -hmm. Um, They say it's pressure sensitive, but I really, I haven't noticed that making, you know, any kind of change in um, pressure. It line weight seems to be consistent no matter what I do. Um, But, you know, ease of use is definitely better. It definitely glides better on the surface for drawing. And then handwriting is definitely way yeah. better. It's it feels just like a normal pen on paper. Um, is, is it accurate? Yeah, no. Um, depending on the app, you know, some apps uh, seem faster hmm. for capture than others, but it's pretty accurate. I tried to um, write really small. It doesn't like that. Oh. Um. But, I mean, I think that's more a thing of, like, the iPad and the app than it is the stylus. You just really can't take really small notes. The thing is, I would really like to have an iPad that's similar to, um, what's the one that, um, oh, it's not, is it the Cintiq? What's the one that has the monitor built into it, the tablet? The Cintiq. The, if, okay. Okay. But the thing is, is that I don't think Apple will ever make that because then it pretty much goes against yeah. their own mantra of if you're using a pen, then you, you're you doing it wrong. Right. But- um, if you are a, a, I mean, this, like I said, this is only for the iPad. If you're doing art on the desktop mm-hmm. or the Mac, I would not, I mean, you wouldn't use this. You'd no. be you know, a Wacom tablet. And those are pressure sensitive. That is, no matter what, I mean, really any tablet from Wacom, is legit and that is the standard for any artist i don't care what you do from just simple interface design to full-on you know fashion apparel um work that that is that but um yeah it's nice um i got it for 30 bucks it comes with a nice little cap so that you know that disc isn't like ruined when you throw it in your bag or what have you oh nice and it's actually magnetic so i can throw it on the iPad. <laughs> Casey, Casey is showing her iPad case covered, closed, and then the the, the pen is sticking on it. Um, I mean, I mean, it'll probably you know if I threw this in my bag, it'll just get pulled oh, off. Sure. But you know, I it's, it's cute. Whatever. I like that. All right, moving on to apps. Uh, what's your app for the week? My app is Weather HD 2.0. This was a really nice weather app. I first found out about it when the iPad came out, and Mm -hmm. it was a really nice weather app for the iPad, and then I got it on my iPhone. I haven't really checked in with them or played around with it probably in a year or so. Um, And they just came out with their update to 2.0 this week, I think Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's... And like I said, it's just a really pretty weather app. So if I go and I see... Okay, so I open it up and it does, um, like, you know, location recognition and finds out where you are automatically and just starts kind of streaming the weather conditions. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's got, like, some video or something of, of flying through clouds, like Superman. 
and it's just really nice and it's so you, like you get right away a grasp of the weather you know from the animation mm -hmm. but also what day it is you know it's dusk and then you have the actual information overlaid you know the actual um temperature uh precipitation humidity high and low and then you can um get the four day uh or yeah it's a four day forecast you can also put in um multiple locations you know and and view those um but what's really kind of neat too and it's like they really didn't even have to put this in they could have just stopped there Ooh. is maps feature that's which nice a big old google earth style globe and you can kind of zoom around it and it's all 3d and pretty and um yep <laughs> you just Never <laughs> bumped yourself out of the app I'm looking at the uh, screenshots on the uh, on the iPad store, the App Store. Th this looks pretty slick, and it's only ninety nine cents. Uh huh. Um, yeah, uh, you can actually get more stuff. There's in app purchases for um, integrating. Um, I think Yahoo Weather, so you get more detailed information, and then for a little bit more, yep. you can um, get. Another service that's even more crazy weather. <laughs> nice stuff. I, I have a thing for weather apps and astronomy apps. So this one's uh, this one's pretty slick. I'm still sort of uh, a little keen on weather bug. I haven't moved away from that yet. Because all the other apps seem to have something that is just not as good as weather bug. But maybe I'll take a look at that. My app for this week is actually a Mac app. It's called Soundboard, and it's the app that I've been using to run <laughs> all the sound effects on the show. So <clears throat> uh, basically, if here if I'll, I'll bring this up. So if I want to play the theme again, it's already queued up for me, and I can just play it just like that, and you can stop it. You can uh, there, there are actually a lot more things to this than I've ever done. There are triggers that you can do so that if one finishes, it'll start another one. Uh, you can fade in, fade out. Let me see if I can find something here that I can maybe... So you can fade that out if I wanted to. It's really cool, and I think a lot of podcasters use this. And I think so, too. I think this is probably what um, Brian of NSFW uses. It sounds like it might even be what... Um Scott Johnson of Frog Pants. I think uses. he does. I think Scott uses this. But uh, I, uh, if I didn't have this, then what I would have to do is I would have to bring up all these individual things uh, mm -hmm. in QuickTime or iTunes or something and then play them through that. The nice thing about this, um, apart from the effects that you can do, is that you can change the output device. So if I wanted this to go, and those of us who do podcasting mix our audio different ways. So you can tell this thing which output device you want it to, uh, to go out to. Um, so they, they did a really good job. This is at Ambrosia Software. I think it's AmbrosiaSW.com. We just checked that. Ambrosia's been around for a long, long time. How much is that up? I don't know, but I think it's $50. But if you're doing podcasting and, and you're yeah, dependent on sound effects, it's well worth the money. Yeah. I think. Um, I would definitely get this. I would. I. I just. Uh, I. I tell everybody to get this app. So, I approve. All right, moving on Very to good. feedback. What, what do we, we what actually do you have, for have us? some feedback this uh, this episode? We got an email from a listener, Phaser Fire, who I believe is currently in the chat room. He listens to a lot of uh, Mike's show. Big fan. <laughs> um. He says, hey, Starman, an obligatory co-host. What does that even um, mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. You should know me and I now. We've only had 28 episodes, and I'm in the chat room for this week in Trek almost, well, as much as I can be. I'm at work, you know, when you record. But um, anyways, um, he has uh, lots of things to say, but uh, in any case, he... Um, he he gets to a YouTube link of a video rap between Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. 
<laughs> um, I've actually seen this, and it's pretty entertaining. The um, the impressions, I mean, they're they're not the best, but you know, it's as as a total fangirl, which I am, it's <laughs> it's worth a it's worth a watch at any rate. So if you you know just do a quick Google or yeah Google or YouTube search for like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates rap, you'll probably find it. Um, it's not that long, and um, he mentions that it has a surprise appearance from a certain computer towards the end. Oh. So uh, I won't give out any spoilers for that. Um, but yeah, um, thanks again for uh, the email, Phaser Fire, and we welcome everybody's emails. Um, whether you know it's just kind of like a hey, what's up? Hey, have you seen this? Or you totally got all your facts wrong. I'm going to shoot you out. <laughs> um, we welcome all of that. Um, so, our email again: theinfiniteloopshow at gmail dot com. And if you want to uh, yell at me directly, I am at Star Mike. I am at Casey Queso on the Twitters. We're on Google Plus. We're on the Facebooks. <laughs> the Facebooks. Um, I think that's it. The Goog, the FB, the tweets. What else is there? I uh, think that's it. Uh, nothing else in my life. <laughs> All right. We want to thank everybody for what? It's not going to happen, but. <laughs> no, I didn't hear what you said because the stupid Skype just cut you off. I, I can't stand what, what well, Skype has been doing. It wasn't important anyways. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out. There, there, mm, I'm there has to be a better it. way. I know. We we. I think the entire world as a whole has a big beef with Skype. But there's, what else, what are we going to do? Like, Google Hangouts, I don't think is, I mean, for recording purposes, like no. this. It's, no, not it's not nearly not as good. Solution, but Skype's not that good either. So what are you going to do? Skype's good. The only problem that I have with Skype is the fact that if the host talks over the guests, yes. like, like, you can you can talk over wait I can talk over you but you can't talk over me and it's very unfair and I don't like that um, but there doesn't I can't figure out how to fix that. Well, we're both up. Really, so we're just gonna have to oh I don't know write our own. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for this week's Infinite Loop show. We will see you. Yep. All right. Take care. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye. What do you like? I like Max. <laughs>